Hello. This is the Japanese copper blowtorch fabrication by Iron Bear Marine. That's me. This is the copper blowtorch that I built based on a short video that I saw on the YouTube. So uh, after studying the a few photos of the video and a little pencil drawing that the collector of that artifact had, I was able to construct a working model of the blowtorch. Held together by a couple of pins. So the main body of the blowtorch is a reservoir which holds the alcohol and I'm using a copper or a cotton wicking material. Fill it up here, light it here. This is the jet body. It is basically a saddle tank that is filled up with alcohol and you'll see here let's see if we can get that a little tube is sticking down that is uh, soldered inside of the reservoir the saddle tank if you will and has a aperture angled out at 90 degrees and when the alcohol inside boils becomes steam it shoots out that little aperture as a jet and we'll demonstrate that so there it is right there my copy of a Japanese blowtorch and then we'll see how it goes We'll start construction using 22 gauge copper sheet and I will start laying out the alcohol reservoir or the main body of the torch. Okay, here we go. Actually, that should uh, go the other way.
close enough. So the body so what happens is this will get cut out and bent. The uh, extra quarter inch here goes to this bottom plate and is equal to the distance between here and here so that when this is bent up it'll match that point there to that point there. And this will get traced onto the copper and then I will bend it into place. So it's laid out and here at the bench here and we're going to cut the pieces now. that and then we'll put that in the brake and bend that
trim those off. This is the uh, nice little 12 inch finger brake that I have and I will now bend the uh, copper parts that we have cut into the box form. So I bent the box into shape and then um, I'll get the edges finished off so that I can solder them shut. And then I'll make the top. I've got the tabs here, which will be the ends of the tanks. I need to cut in for the saddle. Do that in the in the workbench. All right, so here we are. Got the little box bent up. That's looking pretty good. Then I'm going to uh, do some tapping with a little wooden block and get all the edges all fitted close together where I can then silver solder them. Might require a little extra filing and whatnot to get the fit right. There's some little little nibs and whatnot that will are interfering with that are interfering with the quality of the fit and I'm not happy with so I'm going to do a little uh, hand filing and whatnot to get the get a nice nice closed thing the uh, corners and then I will fit the uh, seams together And uh, have that. I also need to make the top for that, which I'm laid out for, and uh, that will require the use of uh, a drill and a jeweler saw to uh, make the apertures that you see here. I just uh, opened a little round hole and uh, made a sort of a bean shape elongated hole and then to keep the top rigid I uh, soldered on little brass rings so it wouldn't oil can or flex on me so now I'm going to lay out the uh, inner part of the saddle on the plates here. We'll do that. And I'll lay out the one. Cut it out and then trace it onto the second plate so that they match. Because I've got to form an inner portion out of some feet stock to get the uh, interior part of the saddle. Okay. 
So sometimes I forget how many tools I have and I realized that I had a nice Pexto hole punch. Um, and I was able to make a nice accurate hole without having to use a drill, which would have just chewed up the copper, something fierce. I had a feeling of wait, grab it out of my hand or grab it out of the vise. I'm trying to hold it in and just chew these things up and I'd have to start all over. But that hole punch made it very easy. Now all I have to do is get my shear in there and knock out that center section for the saddle. That's great.